service continues on page one of your bulletin. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our help is in the name of the Lord. Amen. If you, O Lord, kept a record of sins, O Lord, who could stand? Since we are gathered to hear God's word, call upon him in prayer and praise and receive the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ in the fellowship of this altar. Let us first consider our unworthiness and confess before God and one another that we have sinned in thought, word, and deed, and that we cannot free ourselves from our sinful condition. Together as his people, let us take refuge in the infinite mercy of God, our Heavenly Father, seeking his grace for the sake of Christ and saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. Almighty God, have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and lead us to everlasting life. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for you and for his sake forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. You may be seated. <clears throat> the one who endures to the end will be saved. Let Mount Zion be glad. Let the daughters of Judah rejoice because of your judgments. Walk about Zion. Go around her, number her towers, consider well her ramparts, go through her citadels that you may tell the next generation that this is God, our God forever and ever. He will guide us forever. be with you. Let us pray. Lord, by your boundless goodness.
Testament reading is from the book of Daniel, chapter 12, beginning with verse 1. At that time shall arise Michael, the great prince who has charge of your people. And there shall be a time of trouble such has never been since there was a nation till that time. But at that time your people shall be delivered, everyone whose name shall be found written in the book. And many of those who sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake, some to everlasting life, and some to shame and everlasting contempt. And those who are wise shall shine like the brightness of the sky above, and those who turn many to righteousness like the stars forever and ever. This is the word of the Lord. We join together in the words of the gradual. These are the ones coming out of the great tribulation. They have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. Blessed are those whose strength is in you, in whose heart are the highways to Zion. The epistle reading is from the book of Hebrews, chapter 10, beginning with verse 11. And every priest stands daily at his service, offering repeatedly the same sacrifices, which can never take away sin. But when Christ had offered for all time a single sacrifice for sins, he sat down at the right hand of God, waiting from that time until his enemies should be made a footstool for his feet. For by a single offering he has perfected for all time those who are being sanctified. And the Holy Spirit also bears witness to us. For after saying, this is the covenant that I will make with them after those days, declares the Lord, I will put my laws on their hearts and write them on their minds. Then he adds, I will remember their sins and their lawless deeds no more. Where there is forgiveness of these, there is no longer any offering for sin. Therefore, brothers, since we have confidence to enter the holy places by the blood of Jesus, by the new and living way that he opened for us through the curtain, that is, through his flesh, and since we have a great priest over the house of God, let us draw near with a true heart in full assurance of faith with our hearts sprinkled clean from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. Let us hold fast the confession of our hope without wavering for he who promised is faithful. And let us consider how to stir up one another to love and good works, not neglecting to meet together as is the habit of some, but encouraging one another, and all the more as you see the day drawing near. This is the word of the Lord.
this time I invite the congregation to stand as we continue in the middle of a page five with the Alleluia and verse, page five. The gospel is written in the 13th chapter of St. Mark, beginning at the first verse. And as he came out of the temple, one of the disciples said to him, Look, teacher, what wonderful stones, what wonderful buildings. And Jesus said to him, Do you see these great buildings? There will not be left here one stone upon another that will not be thrown down. And as he sat on the Mount of Olives opposite the temple, Peter and James and John and Andrew asked him privately, Tell us, when will these things be? And what will be the sign when all these things are about to be accomplished? And Jesus began to say to them, See that no one leads you astray. Many will come in my name saying, I am he, and they will lead many astray. And when you hear of wars and rumors of wars, do not be alarmed. This must take place. But the end is not near. For nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. There will be earthquakes in various places. There will be famines. These are but the beginning of the birth pains. Be on your guard. For they will deliver over to you councils and will be beaten in synagogues. And you will stand before governors and kings for my sake to bear witness before them. And the gospel must be proclaimed to all nations. And that when they bring you to trial and deliver you over, do not be anxious beforehand that what you're about to say or whatever is given you in that hour. For it is not you who speak, but the Holy Spirit. And brother will deliver brother over to death, and the father is child, and children will rise against parents and have them put to death. And you will be hated by all for my name's sake. But the one who endures to the end will be saved. This is the gospel of our Lord. We confess our Christian faith now in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father. Congregation may be seated as we continue with hymn 547, The Lamb, a reminder that we rise for the very last verse.
Grace, mercy, and peace from God our Father in heaven and from our living Lord and our Savior Jesus Christ. Hear this very last verse of our gospel lesson. And you will be hated by all for my name's sake, but the one who endures to the end will be saved. This is the gospel of our Lord. You may be seated. Now, I want you to take out your sermon outline for a very important reason. And I want you to notice that there's a front page and there's also a back page. And you can blame the Tuesday morning Bible class for this. Probably more specifically Pat Cook over here. Because she says, Pastor, you need to preach on persecution. And we're going to take a look at that verse and I want you to take hold of this here as we go through some things that I have there. Now, it looks like a long sermon outline, and it is. But a lot of this is information that I wanted you to take with you as you see that you indeed will be one who is persecuted. And let's take a look at what we're seeing here. I titled this, So You're a Christian, and I did the more literal translation there of the text, You will be hated by all men. Isn't that terrific? Isn't it a a great thing for us to talk about today? Well, actually not. And when you think about hatred, you think about a lot of different things. There's a lot of hatred out there. A hatred finds some ill towards someone, something that is in them that is disliked by another, And unfortunately, that wells up, and eventually hatred tears people down and destroys them. Oftentimes, hatred is a two-way street. Oftentimes, when there is hatred, there is hatred on both sides. And that leads even to more destruction. Now, it's important for us to understand something. And I heard uh, some reading this in our Bible class today from Romans chapter 6. Christians suffer because Christ suffered. Christians suffer because you have a connection to Jesus Christ. In fact, Romans 6 reminds us there that because uh, we're connected to Christ, we share in his death, we share in his suffering but also reminds us that we'll share in his resurrection. Now notice there, though, we suffer because of our connection to Christ, and because Christ suffered, we're going to suffer. It doesn't mean we're going to be taken and go thrown on a cross, but I have here three different enemies of believers that will be found, and where did I find those? I found those right in our text today. Uh, first is in the church, verse 9. Be on your guard, for they will deliver you over to councils, and you will be beaten in synagogues. It's hard to believe, but persecution happens also in the church. And persecution happens in the church because something I will warn you about later on when you're dealing with persecution. Persecution happens in the church because there are false teachers in the church. There are people filled for hatred of God and what he teaches and believes. Now look at the next one. Verse 2. There will be persecution. You will suffer. Your enemies will also be found in the home. Wow. In the home. And look at verse 12 there. And brother will deliver brother over to death. And the father is child. And children will rise against parents and have them put to death. That is very intense. But believe it or not, you may not have that situation. I know I don't. There are families who are divided over Jesus Christ. And a lot of those families sometimes may have been the same, and then some have been converted and come to Christ, and there's a separation. It's something that happened very much in the early church as the gospel of Jesus Christ was going out to all people, 
You might have a household where one becomes a Christian and the other doesn't. In fact, we see that Paul also gives instruction that if the one who is not a Christian wants to remain married, you're to remain married. But if the one who wants to be a Christian or doesn't want to be a Christian wants to separate, then Paul says it's okay to separate in that case. So that was going on in the home early on in the early church. And notice also, and this is the one we probably more commonly point out, it also goes on in the community, 9b. And you will stand before governors and kings for my sake to bear witness before them. And the gospel must first be proclaimed to all nations. And when they bring you to trial and deliver you over, do not be anxious beforehand what you are to say, but say whatever is given to you in that hour, for it is not you who speak, but the Holy Spirit." we see that there is also persecution there in the community. And the community is government. I went through, and I don't have time to show you. I could take the time because, I mean, where do we have to go after this? There's not another service, right? But I'm not going to. We've got plenty here. To show you all the places in the world where there's persecution going on. And we know that ISIS... Uh, had two people there that wanted to be caliphs. They wanted to be like Muhammad. In order to be like Muhammad, you had to mimic Muhammad. And what did Muhammad do? Muhammad do when he was trying to get people to become Islamic? He put a sword to their throat and said, convert or die. Well, what was happening with these two caliphs? They were going out and doing the same thing. So Christians, even children, died from ISIS. And we also have one uh, difficult one, too, in India. You must, might, might remember Pastor Nauman. He, for years, has tried to get from Sri Lanka into India. And he's for years, has tried to get there, not to start a church, because they will not let you, but to teach in the university there. And he could not get in there. Most of the country is Hindu, and they expect you to be Hindu. And they want nothing to do with anybody else. They don't go around killing people, but they go around separating people. Look at 1B there. Christians suffer when they confess Christ. Now, there's talk about a temple at the very beginning of this text here. And it's talked about these great beautiful stones and this beautiful temple. But the temple that we're talking about is the one that is right there. The most important temple who is right there, the temple of Jesus Christ. And he was tore down. He suffered and was crucified. And he died. Christians suffer when they confess this. Christians suffer when they confess Christ. Don't think that by doing nothing and keeping quiet you'll stay out of trouble. People will figure out that you're a Christian. Trouble will come come your way. In fact, we see that as God speaks to us and tells us about sin and tells about the suffering and death and the righteousness of Christ given to us, we now in our vocations parent or child, church member, community member, what am I missing? There's one more. Carrie, you should know. Huh? Yeah, uh, your vocation where you work. In each of those places, people will figure out that even if you're quiet, that you're a Christian. And remember, we share that faith in each of those vocations But also remember this, and this is a tension we were talking about in Bible class the other day, souls can be lost eternally. We shouldn't feel that if we don't get out there and preach to everyone that some are going to be lost. No, God has got this under control. But there's also a motivation there to see that there are those who do not know Jesus Christ, those who do not have peace in their life, those who do not know that the free gift of God takes and changes this sinful person into one who has faith, one who believes in Jesus Christ. And that is a gift that God gives to us. Now look at number two under B. 
If you make a confession, make sure you confess with proper training and ammunition. All right. You may want to hold back a little on the ammunition. Okay. But what am I talking about? In all the years I've been here, I've been promoting this. I've taught it several times. It's called lifestyle witnessing. If you go on the very back here, guess what? We have one, two, three, four, five, six verses here. This is your ammunition. This is your training. And listen to these verses. I think you know most of them by heart. Be perfect, therefore, as your heavenly Father is perfect. There is the standard that God lays out for us. And then we see that standard isn't kept in Romans 3.23. For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. And then Romans 6.23, the wages of sin is death. Oh, you know that one. But the gift of God is eternal life. And then John 3.16, for God so loved the world. All right, John 3.36, whoever believes in the Son has eternal life. And Ephesians 2.8.9, for by grace you have been saved through faith, and this is not from yourselves. It's the gift of God, not by works, lest no one should boast. How many of you know most of those Bible verses? All right, you're fully trained and equipped. If you don't, ask the office for them, and they can send them to you electronically. They are called Lifestyle Witnessing Bible Verses. You can share your faith through each one of those, showing people their sin, showing people a need for the Savior, and showing them the Savior, Jesus Christ, who lived for them and died for them. Make a confession. Make sure you have proper training and ammunition. Now look at three there. If you fail to confess, Christ said at a critical time, there is forgiveness for you. Now I want you to think about that. And as I thought about it, I thought about what I used to do when I was in high school. Because you really, when I was in high school in the 70s, you really got persecuted uh, verbally if you confessed Christ. So what I used to do, I used to take these tracts about Jesus. And I used to sneak them in the bathroom. And I made sure nobody was there. And I put them on top of the paper towel dispenser, on top of the urinal, on top of the toilet, so people could see them. But I made sure no one was there. Well, what's the other danger there? If you fail to confess Christ at a critical time, there is forgiveness for you. I want you to think of two people here from the Bible. One, his name is Judas. The other is Peter. Now, Judas did more than fail to confess Christ. He went against Christ. And you all know what happened to him. He hung himself. But here we see Peter who was confronted. Peter who had opportunity to say what was going on in that cross. Peter who had opportunity to say, yes, I was one of them. And I heard the teachings of God. And what did Peter do? He denied Jesus not once, twice, but three times. Now I want you to ask you this. Was there forgiveness there for Peter? Shake your head yes. There was forgiveness. And we see that forgiveness came to him even though he denied Christ several times. So if you see there is a failure in your confession of faith, there is forgiveness. As we confess our sins before God, he brings forgiveness to you. Now look at C there. Protect yourself from persecuting. Uh, protect yourself from persecution. You know why you get persecuted? You get persecuted because you're doing right. You're doing what you're supposed to be doing. You naturally share that love of Jesus Christ that has been given to you, that has given you forgiveness of sins, that has given you the confidence that. When I can't live for Christ, Christ has lived for me and I have his righteousness. That, my friends, needs to be shared with everyone. And you're persecuted because you naturally want to do it and you're doing right. Now, I have several things down here. I believe there's five or six of them here. Um, protect yourself from persecution. And I, I got these from an article in an old Luther. Lutheran, I think it was a Lutheran witness. Yeah, old Lutheran witness, right, way back in 2014. 
And that's, uh, so if you see my wife, see, that's a good reason to save stuff. 2014, right here, using it in the pulpit. So what is going on here? Number one, and I think this is a failure of pastors all over the place. Because I'll tell you there's, that you sin. I'll tell you that you're tempted to sin. And I kind of consider myself sort of a conservative guy. But what do I fail to tell you most of the time? And many pastors do. Who is there bringing that temptation? Who is there a part of that temptation? It's the devil. Realize the devil is behind every persecution. Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. John 6 reminds us of that. That Jesus has the words of eternal life and that he overcomes the devil in our lives. We don't need to go to the devil. The devil will draw us away from Christ because the devil hates Christ. But we go to the Lord because he has the words of eternal life. Number two, no scripture verses by heart. I just took you through some for confessing the faith. But also you should grab a couple of verses. You don't need to know a whole lot. For protection against the devil. When the devil tempts you, what is the best way to get back at him? Think about Jesus. Jesus used the word of God. Find yourself, one, two, three, however big your brain is, some Bible verses to go ahead and memorize and know those verses by heart and use them in time of temptation Use them when you need protection from being persecuted. And here's the next one. Pray. 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 What did Jesus do before he was executed? He prayed. What did Stephen do while he was being executed? He prayed. So as you face persecution, don't forget to pray and use those Bible verses that you've memorized and incorporate those into your prayers. As the word speaks to you, you respond to that word in prayer. Look at number four. Don't trust people who are the enemies of the faith. Now what do I mean here? Well, I'm retiring at the end of December. And uh, one of the things... I know that I probably won't have to hear too much before. Well, Pastor, I know you don't like so-and-so, but I find him interesting to listen to. Well, it's not that I don't like so-and-so, and and I may never have met him, Joel. (laughs) But he's teaching false teaching. Joel is the extreme of the gentleman I talked about last week, Schuler. Schuler admitted that he mixed in his psychology, his sociology, with his Christianity. He admitted it. Joel doesn't do that. I've heard Joel, he doesn't get tied up in this Trinity stuff. It's not that important. The poison comes as you're attracted to it, and there's more poison there. Don't trust people who are... Enemies of the faith. Number five, have your ears open to be sure false teachers have not infiltrated the church. Listen. Listen. Where does God go first? To the bar down the street where they're cussing? No, he comes here first. He comes here first to confuse the teaching of the church. He comes here first to draw us away from Jesus Christ. He comes here first and... As we see, when those kind of things come in and we don't adhere to them, what happens? Persecution. Roman numeral number two. Good, look at We are halfway through the sermon. <laughs> Actually, we are two-thirds of the way. Just don't tell anybody. Christ allows his church to suffer under Satan, from whom she already had been delivered. When Jesus went to the cross, when Jesus came, what did he say? My kingdom is at hand. It's here. And then how did Jesus really show us that? He went to the cross and he defeated sin, death, and the devil. The devil's already been defeated. But Christ allows his church to suffer 
suffer under Satan from whom she has already been delivered. Suffering is a participation in Christ's story. And there's no better way to see this, no better way to understand baptism also than to go to Romans 6. We share in the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ. We share because we share in the death. We share in sufferings. As you are going through sufferings, you're part of the story of Christ. Jesus suffered. He suffered pain and death. You will suffer persecution, but that connects you to his story. That connects you to Jesus Christ. Now look at B. This is something we don't like. Suffering is a discipline of the Lord. Tammy, I want you to notice I'm looking at this magazine again that I saved from 2014. And there's a wonderful Bible verse in here regarding discipline. And have you forgotten the exhortation that addresses you as sons? My son, do not regard lightly the discipline of the Lord, nor be weary when reproved by him. For the Lord disciplines the one he loves and chastises every son whom he receives. It is for discipline that you have to endure. God is treating you as sons. For what son is there whom his father does not discipline? Hebrews 12, 5 through 7. Wonderful Bible verse that shows you that through this suffering, something unique is happening. Through this suffering, you are being disciplined by Jesus Christ. We also see it in 1 Peter chapter 1. Where there it says, in this you rejoice. What do you rejoice in? Your salvation. Then it says, though for a little while you may have to suffer griefs and all kinds of trials. Peter, he's the one who's saying this. Peter's been through it. He denied Christ. And what is he talking about griefs and trials? So that the genuineness of your faith which is more precious than gold, may be shown. As your persecution comes to you, you look at it like a cauldron that is heated, that has metal in it, that has gold in it. And as that cauldron is heated, all the impurities out of the gold come up and they're removed. And what do you have left? Pure gold. As you go through persecution, it's the same way. And what do you have left? Faith. Your faith is left and takes hold of Jesus Christ. Now, look at also C. Suffering is a sign of imminent redemption. Suffering is a sign of the beginning of the end times. Hear that. We read it today, the beginning of the end times. But suffering also is a sign. But guess what? The preaching of the gospel is also a sign of the end times. All of that is part of our eminent redemption. And look at D there. Now what D is, is more of a recap. So I don't have to preach all this stuff over again. But I can remind you of it once again here. The church suffers as participation in Christ's own redemptive story so that we might rejoice in the midst of sorrows. In this you rejoice, Peter said, even though for a little while, compared to eternity... You may have to suffer grief in all kinds of trials. You can rejoice because we see that God has given you something to get through all of this. And the Holy Spirit in baptism has given you faith. Faith which takes hold of Christ and overcomes persecution. Number two, because we are privileged and have participation in Christ's story, uh, you are a part of that redemptive story. Read Romans 6. Read Romans 6 every day. It's a great, great chapter. But you are participating in the story of Christ. You have an intimate connection to Jesus Christ that comes even in your suffering. The church suffers participation in Christ's old redemptive story so that we may love the Father who shapes us after his Son's image. Not only do we see our Savior, Jesus Christ, but we see the Father who sent him. The one who sent his only begotten son to us. And why? Look at number four. That we may know the long expected of the day of the Lord has arrived. I want to share with you in conclusion two verses 
of the Lamb that we just sang. And though we go through this persecution, what is the promise at the very end of this text? There's salvation for you. He sighs, he dies. He takes my sin in wretchedness. Faith sees, believes. Oh, excuse me, I jumped. He lives, forgives. He gives me his own righteousness. He rose, he rose. My heart with thanks now overflows. His song prolong to every heart to him belong. In the name of Jesus, amen. With this, I invite you to rise as we join together in the words of the offertory.
together in our armed services prayer and would thank our veteran Bill Anton for uh, helping us with the readings today. With that, I invite you to bow your heads and your hearts as we go to our Lord in prayer. Let us pray for the whole church of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. We thank you, O Lord, our God and Father, for all your goodness. We praise you especially for the everlasting testament you have made with us through the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. Grant that every good work we do would be pleasing in your sight for his sake. Lord, behold the sick, behold the infirm, behold the dying and all that are in need. Especially today, we remember July Betty and also the Becknell family. Grant them healing of body and patience to endure their inflictions in your mercy. Grant these and all of our petitions, O God, for the sake of Jesus Christ. Invite the congregation to stand as we join together in our armed services prayer. Lord God, you have sustained our nation in the past and continue to bless us. We recall how so many have given their lives for the cause of freedom. Men and women continue to sacrifice and serve in the armed forces. Today we pause to reflect and honor those who gave and who continue to sacrifice so much in the defense of our freedom to be faithful. We remember with thankfulness the millions of Americans who give so generously of their life and labor in times of national conflict, particularly the family members of our soldiers, sailors, air crew, Marines, and Coast Guardsmen. Lord, you prayed earnestly for your disciples, that they would be kept in your name, filled with joy, and sanctified in your word of truth. Gracious Lord, we ask you for your strength for our chaplains who serve in the wounded warrior wards and in our military hospitals as they provide pastoral care to hurting and wounded veterans and their families. Only through your sustaining love can they move out daily with confidence and joy. These and all things we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and rules with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We pray together now the prayer our Lord has taught us to pray. Our Father, give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, the kingdom our Lord Jesus Christ on the night in which he was betrayed took bread and when he had given thanks he broke it and gave it to the disciples and said take and eat this is my body which is given for you this do in remembrance of me in the same way also he took the cup after supper and when he had given thanks he gave it to them saying drink of it all of you this cup is the New Testament in my blood which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins this do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And the peace of the Lord be with you always.
Thou mayest through body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen and preserve you steadfast into life everlasting. And now it is peace and serve the Lord with gladness.
Let us pray. Gracious God, our Heavenly Father, you have given us a foretaste of the feast to come in the Holy Supper of your Son's body and blood. Keep us firm in the true faith throughout our days of pilgrimage, that on the day of his coming we may together with all your saints celebrate the marriage feast of the Lamb in his kingdom, which has no end. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you his peace.